Lieutenant General Stephen Gillen, His Excellency Antonio Latamillo, Mr. Senate T. Mangalile, Consul General Sonny Busa, Honorable Bob McDonald, Distinguished Guests, Cadets, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good evening. I want to thank God Almighty for the opportunity to be here tonight to receive the award in honor of the memories of my fallen comrades and heroes of Marado. I want to thank my parents who are now my messengers to God in heaven. I also want to thank my wife, Jayaisa, and my two children, Derek and Mikhail, for all their understanding and support to my service. My siblings, Manang Vilma, Manang Rene, and Junior. Families, mentors, friends, the Association of Graduates, the United States Military Academy, and uh, I was honored a while ago by the presence of previous Unijer awardees. Thank you. Shortly after graduating from West Point as part of the class of 2013, I was asked how I would define my success in the military service. My answer was simple. Success would not be determined by the rank I achieved or the awards I received. Instead, it would be defined by the difference I make in the units I lead and in the lives of my soldiers. When I left West Point, my leadership goal was clear, to make a difference. This goal gave me a deep sense of purpose as I navigated the early challenges of my service as a new lieutenant. Tonight, I want to share lessons relevant to all cadets, no matter where your future role takes you, whether you lead in combat, in garrison, or in any other capacity, the philosophy of making a difference remains relevant. Throughout my service, I lost comrades and close friends who, like Alexander Nininger, made the ultimate sacrifice. Nininger's bravery in Bataan, charging forward despite his wounds, mirrors the courage I saw in my comrades. Their selflessness inspired me to serve with deeper commitment. Each loss transformed my goal of making a difference into a commitment to make that difference enduring and sustainable. Making a sustainable difference means creating a solid foundation of service excellence that becomes ingrained in the unit's culture and values. This ensures that the unit continues to thrive long after a leader's tenure. It involves developing a unit that upholds high standards of excellence even under poor leadership and can reach even greater heights with a capable leader. To make a sustainable difference, I want to share two crucial points. Leading from the front and empowering your team. In the battles against an overwhelming number of terrorists determined to kill me and my soldiers in Sulu, Piedapo, Basilan, and Marawi, explosions and casualties caused at times even the most solid plans to collapse. But one thing remained constant. Look to the leaders and follow them. When initiating progressive changes in a unit filled with seasoned warriors, I learned from leading Philippine scout rangers that you must first earn the respect of your troops. You do this by leading them from the front in assaulting through enemy defenses. And going far from the battlefield on the grounds of the Philippine Military Academy and the Scout Rangers School, guided by a program designed to develop warriors and leaders, leading from the front 
remain central. Both as a core principle we instill in our students and as the method through which we invite them into their mindset. For those who may not lead soldiers in combat, leading by example also means striving to be a beacon of excellence, embodying every positive change you wish to implement. But you will not always be one of the strongest soldiers. Your troops will see you tired. Do not let that affect your goal to always be a leader by example. You can turn that weakness into an empathy-filled connection with your troops and still lead by example. Get tired. Get tired. But by all means, keep pushing forward because that will inspire your soldiers to overcome their weaknesses and follow your lead. Additionally, when reporting to your unit, you may not always be fully proficient in its technical functions. However, through hard work, humility, and discipline, you will seize the opportunity to learn from both your superior officers and your subordinates. Before long, your commitment to leading by example will place you at the forefront of your troops, guiding them in mastering the technical aspects to drive organizational improvement. Leading by example requires becoming a selfless leader. As a leader of character, strive to establish a culture that ensures that even if a less capable leader follows after your state, a strong foundation remains, allowing the unit to thrive. This only happens though if you do not seek change solely to build a legacy based on selfish personal recognition. Positive changes are never, positive changes are never the leader's work alone. They are a collective effort of the unit. Focusing on personal legacies often leads to a productive competition among leaders who may prioritize personal recognition over the unit's success. Consequently, no sustainable change of course and opportunities for progress are lost. Importantly, the collective approach to affecting lasting transformation requires empowerment. True empowerment happens when your team, whose values align with the Army values, takes full ownership of their roles and understands that their contributions are vital to the organization's success. Equip them with the tools and confidence to improve continually, and you will be the team capable of sustained excellence. However, inspiring ownership is not easy. It requires the active involvement of subordinate leaders, officers, and NCOs. Mentor them to become even better leaders than you. As every member of your unit understands their role, accountability becomes essential. It serves as a feedback mechanism for individual and unit growth. However, Ensure that wrongdoings beyond correctional growth are addressed to signal that gross disrespect of standards are not tolerated. This will ensure that continued discipline and focus to the unit's progress. But to sustain progress amid failures, accountability alone is not sufficient. Your troops should share a commitment to step up and fill in gaps. Let me say this again. Cadets, ladies and gentlemen, to make sustainable difference in your future units, be leaders of character to exemplify the progress you want to see. Begin empowering your units by ensuring everyone's values align with the Army values. That everyone takes ownership. That subordinate leaders are engaged and capable and that everyone is held accountable to the highest standards. More importantly, inspire them 
to step up amid shortcomings and continue driving progress long after your leadership ends. However, achieving progress, achieving enduring progress is not an easy feat. You will face resistance to the changes you initiate. You will be compelled to make unpopular decisions. But I am confident that you will uphold the West Point principle of doing the harder right over the easier wrong, all for making progressive organizational changes. I am confident that you have the ability to lead from the front and become catalysts for lasting change because everything I share today, I repeat, everything I share today, I started learning right here at West Point. The only thing separating you, the only thing separating you from each other is the grit to apply the leadership lessons you learned here amid varying challenges. This difference stems from your commitment and discipline under the West Point Leader Development Program, which encompasses character, academics, military, and physical excellence. Before I end, let me quote our national hero in the Philippines, Dr. Jose Rizal. Like Alexander Nininger, Rizal embodied the ideals of sacrifice and belief in a better future. In his book, El Filibusterismo, he wrote, and I quote, I will die without seeing the dawn break over my country, but I am certain it will rise, and the Filipino people will see their freedom. Unquote. Results sacrifices became a source of inspiration for Filipino heroes who fought for the nation's freedom and made a long-lasting impact on future generations. As we reflect on the ideals exemplified by Rizal, Nietzsche, and the countless heroes who selflessly offered their lives for our freedom, please allow me to pay tribute Please allow me to tribute this award in memory of my comrades from the 2nd Scout Ranger Company, 1st Scout Ranger Battalion, 1st Scout Ranger Regiment. Their courage and dedication continue to inspire me every day. 2nd Lieutenant Ronald Detalia, my fellow platoon leader who fell in 2015 while fighting Abu Sayyaf in Sulu. Sergeant Jungi Dison, who made the ultimate sacrifice in 2021, defending the people of Cotabato. I also want to honor the fallen heroes of Marawi, individuals I had the privilege of knowing as friends. First Lieutenant John Carl Morales, First Lieutenant Franklin Abakahe, First Lieutenant Junrich Ligada, Second Lieutenant McLean Abuyabor, Private First Class Jaime Invento, Private First Class Jetro Vincent Carlos. May we also remember Captain Romel Santoval, Private First Class Separate Tugare Jr., and more than a hundred other scout rangers, soldiers, marines, and police officers who sacrificed their lives in that battle. Just as Dr. Rizal, Sir Rizal, and then Alexander Nininger, Expressed, expressed their unwavering faith in the future, we must ensure the sacrifices of those who gave their lives are not wasted. I repeat, we must ensure the sacrifices of days of those who gave their lives are not wasted. Therefore, amid the rapidly evolving security landscape that continues to pose challenges to our nations, we must remain steadfast. As instruments of change, advancing all they fought for, for duty, for honor, and for country. Thank you.